Hello, Glenpool. Welcome to another edition of Conversations with the City. Uh, today we are with uh, Councilwoman Jacqueline Lund. Uh, she has been with us for a while here at the city, and so we want to take a few moments and talk about why she is, uh, why she ran for council, and what she hopes to accomplish while she is here with us on that. So, Jackie, welcome. Thanks Thank for coming you. in and visiting with us for a few minutes. Appreciate it, David. So, tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been uh, here in Glenpool, and how long you've been as part of the council. Well, actually, it's we would have been here a 29 years and two months in the next week. Wow. So <laughs> we, we've been here quite a long time before our first anniversary yeah. on our wedding. We we moved here and um, we picked Glenpool um, as a stopping point. Right. Because when we got married, I worked in Tulsa and covered 918 area code. And my husband managed a Hereford ranch down in Hannah. Mm. And he had to live on the ranch. And I had to be in the office in Tulsa and travel Oklahoma. So we looked at the map and everything and we were like, well, let's just buy a house in Glenpool because I'm one hour away, exactly 55 minute drive to where he was. So it was a lot easier to commute back and forth and right. see each other. And we stayed, it's a, it was a nice little community. Uh, it was close to everything. And um, the school was excellent. Yeah. Um, my sister was a nanny on the East Coast. And when she came to visit, after Elizabeth got into school, she's like, your school's ran a lot like a private school and that we're paying for on the yeah. East Coast. And I was like, hmm. So we we decided that this was where we were going to raise our kids and stay. And, and as I've lived here, I've been uh, somewhat involved mm -hmm. with the city politics, <laughs> as we would call it. But um, in 16, it kind of opened up. We had someone leave off the council, and I got appointed uh, through the process that we go through yeah. and ran on the next one, and I've ran ever since. So mm -hmm. um, it opened my eyes. There's a lot going on that I didn't really think it's about uh, with uh, city council. I, I've learned a lot, and I thought I knew a lot. But boy, I, I knew nothing, you know, yeah. <laughs> until I got here. <laughs> it's amazing how much goes on behind the scenes that sometimes you don't always realize. Even people right. that are involved and try to keep up. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot to the cities. And so, you you know, it's been a great thing, I think, over the last year, a uh, few years. It was seven years now for you on council. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so um, I know it's been great for me to work, have a chance to work with you. It's been fun you know, to see your excitement about the city mm -hmm. and your desire to make sure that we're doing things with excellence as part of what we do. Uh, but I love what you talked about a minute ago as well on the school system and talking about how it was run as a private school and your, you know, your, your sister was talking about that and you guys love the schools here because I think that's one of our best kept secrets in a lot of ways. I know you've been heavily involved in what's going on. Um, you know, especially involved on in the sports side uh, with your kids and mm -hmm. some of the, the activities that they do. So uh, I just think it's, it's a great piece and, and excited about our school systems and the growth we've seen. But talking a little bit about some of that growth, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you've, you've been here, you said close to 30 years now, you've been mm -hmm. on the council for the last seven. So talk about some of the things that you've seen change oh in the community in that time. Uh, we have exploded. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have to say it, it takes, it took a while for it to get momentum. Mm -hmm. um, but I really think in, in um, I might take a lot of heat for this, but I did give a lot of heat in the beginning when we came to build this building that right. we're in right now in our conference center mm -hmm. and move City Hall. And I was also one of those, why are we moving it out? Here's our main niche of the town. Right. What, what are we doing? And, and after being on council and seeing how things are run, and even being involved at that point, um, when things started changing and we got the Walmart and all this building was taking place, um, I could see that the city was actually, it, it was running well. Mm -hmm. um, it, maybe not as proficient as it is now, or efficient rather, but um, it, was, it was running well. And I could see the vision. Mm -hmm. And whoever had the vision for this, Oh, God love them, because this is the most beautiful building, and, and I hear it from a lot of people all over the state that come and visit, people from out of town, 
uh, or out of state that come mm -hmm. to visit too. They really, it's it's a beautiful piece of our town. We've seen some really good growth over the last few years here. We have, and and with that comes pain. Yeah, it is. You don't you don't grow this fast uh, without pains. Um, I kind of equate that to um, my son, much like my cousin, in one year of their life mm -hmm. grew six inches. And that's a lot to grow at yep. one time. And the pain that they had in their joints, and you mm -hmm. couldn't relate that. That's kind of like us with the city. Yeah. You know, we people don't understand that um, we have to have the houses. We have to have the apartments. We have to have all kinds of living for folks. Because without people coming here, then we don't get our retail. Right. We don't get our entertainment and our restaurants and, and everything else. Right. And, um, but we have to have all that before we can widen all the roads. Yeah. And so we have growing pains. We have, we have roads that not only need to be resurfaced, like some are being done around town mm -hmm. now and fixed, but they need to be widened. And I think the big problem right now is Elwood yeah. and, and signaling the uh, 141st in Elwood. Yeah. And I know that we had a tax um, mm -hmm. increase or a vote on a tax and we kept it to, yeah. um, that was to handle 121st and Elwood and then the, the mm -hmm. 141st light and Warrior Road. Yeah. And you know, some of those projects have been done. We completely did Warrior Road and yeah, we did it ahead of schedule. And finished and it's, yep. And so now we just have to work on getting Elwood and, you know, some folks don't understand that the 121st we cover between us and Jinx and the county. Right. And uh, my understanding is the county is taking the lead on that yeah. one. And um, so we're moving at their pace, not ours, once again. <laughs> yeah, it's the, uh, yeah, that's the interesting thing sometimes is we... Um, some roads are completely within our jurisdiction, some are shared amongst multiple jurisdictions, and so we work with our partners. And, mm -hmm. and uh, a good example of that is uh, the overlays that are happening right now on 141st and 131st and then on Elwood. Mm -hmm. um, all of those are partnerships between Jinx and Glenpool and Tulsa County. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, you know, that work continues to go on. You know, we right. should be finished up here just really, really quickly. Uh, but we're excited that we've, mm -hmm. we've been able to develop those relationships with our partners and our right. our neighbors and say, hey, how do we get these things done and, and move forward for residents? And, you know, you're right at 121st, the, the widening of that is moving forward, but it's, you know, it's slower than probably everybody would like, including the county. And it's a function of money sometimes. And so mm -hmm. uh, that's the hard part. You're right sometimes for, uh, for those that aren't up here dealing with it like you do on a regular basis mm -hmm. um, to begin to understand some of those timelines well, is, is difficult. We, and we understand that frustration. There's a lot of hands in the pot too because, you know, as a government, it's not like the business where, you know, I'm going to expand mm -hmm. and let's go hire the contractor and let's get going. We have to do bids. We have to do all this infrastructure movement around it. And then, then we're at the mercy of the contractor and their schedule, right. regardless of how we want to do it. But, um, but I think we're on track right now with, with our housing that's mm -hmm. going in that I see a lot of growth. I would love to see um, some recreational yeah. aspects here in Glen Platte, like we're putting in the, the disc golf. Yeah. And, and so I think that's, that's a start. That's a good point. <laughs> you know, we, we've, we've, we've got all this other growth. And so what are, the, what are those things that you are most excited about coming up in the future that we've got on our growth side? You know, you mentioned the disc golf, but, you know, um, what other pieces that, that um, are you getting excited about? I'm, I'm getting really excited about um, that pretty soon, hopefully, we're going to have some more retail and big development that's going to bring in a, a big box store, so to yeah. speak, and, and uh, hopefully a movie theater with that and maybe some other sit-down restaurants. And um, I'd like to see, I know it took a long time to get the St. Francis mm -hmm. Emergency Center, but it was built, to my understanding, to be expanded upward yeah. to be an actual inpatient place. I'd love to see that 
growth take mm -hmm. off, and I think it will as we get more things coming in to Glenpool. Right, as we continue and, to grow. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just real excited that we're on a forward um, trajectory mm -hmm. of businesses coming here because we can pull from Bixby, Kiefer, we're even pulling some out of uh, Sepulpa that surrounds yeah. us, and Jinx, and then all the way down to Mounds, Bags, and and even Alt Mulgee come up here to shop. Yeah. So when I first moved here, there was docks, and it was very small, mm -hmm. and um, it was very limited on time, and we didn't have a stoplight at Mazio's, <laughs> yeah. and it was two lane. So, I mean, in that 30 years, we've gone to where we have uh, several choices to eat yeah. right here. And we, Doc's redid their store, mm -hmm. and it's very pleasant. And, yeah, beautiful facility. you know, I, I hop in there all the time because it's easy. Yeah. I get off work, I can run right in there. I get home and do something. If I, oh, I got to get something. I can run to Doc's and get it. That's right. <laughs> I don't right have to run to Tulsa. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and it's always been a, a good, you know, a desire for our councils to continue to make sure that that whatever people want to be able to do here locally that they can do it locally. right you know that kind of that full service community kind of mindset yeah we have several dentists mm -hmm. when i moved to town there was i think one dentist yeah. in town and one doctor and you know we've got utica park and, mm -hmm. and warren and and yeah. even our private doctors still that's right so so given you know the growth that we've had in the past and some of the things that we're likely to continue to see growth here mm -hmm. into the future what are some of your goals for the next 10 years what do you, what would you like to see glimple do over these next you know, say 10 years well i want to go back to the vote that we had for the the big dream mm -hmm. fields of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i want to i would like to see a ballpark mm -hmm. um and it's not necessarily because i partake of that but a lot of my friends have kids, and a lot of kids play baseball and softball and soccer, and we've got a soccer complex yep. now, which is great. Um, we have all the little league football and cheer and mm -hmm. everything. So we're a very sports-minded community, and a lot of people travel. I mean, I started traveling with wrestling with my son. It would be great to be able to have some kind of big wrestling thing here in Glenpool. Right. Um, and but th that's an activity that that's family you know yeah, everybody absolutely. gets together and everybody can partake in that and then it brings people into our community and spend their mm -hmm. tax dollars here uh, yeah. to help perpetuate that but i'd love to see a movie theater um, i like to bowl I'd, you know uh, going across the river yeah. or going over into sepulp is fine but i like to have something local because um, our kids need something to do yeah. as well and stay here. Um, you know, I, I just want us to be a self-contained community. Right. Yeah. Self-contained, self-sufficient, yeah. and to where we don't have to leave town and go yeah, somewhere it's, else. It's a, people want to go, they can, you know, right. choose to, to go partake of something that the community has got. That's great. Uh, but, but we have abilities and offerings for them here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I think that's a... A, a great thing for us as we look to uh, where we want to go long term. I yeah. think sports complex is an amazing opportunity, not only oh, for yeah. our local people, but uh, to continue to to grow and help that travel ball side of things. And mm -hmm. uh, as my grandson is now getting into that that mode and uh, mm -hmm. starting to understand that a little better in the amount of, the amount of travel that they well, do, but it's you know it's an interesting piece and one that we unfortunately we don't have currently is the ability to do. Um, uh, upgraded baseball and softball fields. We don't have any real softball, um, you know, mm -hmm. league to speak of here in Glenpool where our kids travel and do other things outside of here, but we do have a local baseball team, but uh, we, we've got to continue to grow that and we've got to continue right. to provide opportunities for that. We have a younger um, population in Glenpool. Right. So we, we want to make sure that we're providing things for those families as well. Yeah, we'd like to keep them here. That's right. So. So one of the questions we, we ask everybody um, that we, we have a chance to sit down with here is, what is your favorite thing about Glenpool? It's friendly. Yeah. It's close to everything, mm -hmm. but then you can stay right here and not leave town. That's right. There have been, um, we've gotten to a point now that there have been days when I have just 
stayed right here in Glenpool and not left for several days. Yeah. Uh, not had to go to Tulsa Hills even or go into Jinx. Mm -hmm. I could do everything I needed to do right here in Glenpool. That's right. Now, there's not very many days that are like that because I go all over and do a lot of stuff, but, but I can. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. And, you know, you recognize people. It's a smaller town. It's a small town feel, mm -hmm. but it's providing more than a small town. Right. And I don't think people really realize that um, because when I moved here, I came from Tulsa, mm -hmm. and there wasn't much here. So to me, it was like I'm just using it as the commute. Mm -hmm. It's just where I lay my head. But after a few years, it quickly became where I actually live right. and do everything. And, um, and sometimes that, that is a very good feeling and, and uh, sometimes that's really warranted. Yeah. We need to be able to provide because there's some people that can't go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Glimple is a, uh, it's one of those places that, uh, at least in my opinion, is, is easy to love, it's easy to fall in love with Glimple. Mm -hmm. and, and our people here, uh, and, you know our local businesses that are here, uh, mm -hmm. and all the things that they do in the community. It's just an amazing place. So, yeah, uh, it's it's, I, it's great. I'd I'd equate this to I moved away after college to a small mm -hmm. area that um, you were outsider if you weren't third or fourth generation right. being right there, and um, so I was a little hesitant when I moved to Glenpool, and. I have never once felt that. Right. Yeah. Never once. I've raised my kids here. My kids are Glenpoolians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Even though they're off doing their own thing now. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. It's it's a it's a great little community. It is. And uh, it's it's exciting to see the growth that we've had. I'm uh, really excited and, about and it. The growth that, that we believe is still to come. And mm -hmm. so, um, again, thank you for your service. Uh, for giving back to this community and being a part of the, the city council. Um, uh, we're just excited to work with you. I know the city staff is just excited to work with all of our council members. We've got a great council right now. We have an excellent council. Really I can't... looking forward to what is ahead and how do we do that appropriately. Yeah, everybody on this council is really looking out for the city. Mm -hmm. And they, they listen to um, our constituents. Yeah. And... Um, you know, but sometimes there's things that we have to do that none of us like, yeah. and it goes slower than we all want because yeah. we're we're the microwave, snap our fingers and it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Society right it now. Is. It is. <laughs> and so uh, it, you know, that's the reality sometimes of government. Is uh, you know the one thing everybody hates about government, even those of us that live it and work it every day, is that mm -hmm. it does take time, unfortunately. To you get have to have patience, you and do. David, you have a lot of it. <laughs> Kids would agree with that sometimes. When I know mine up, don't. But, uh, <laughs> mine don't uh, agree with me. But again, thank you so much for, for what you do for this community and for being yeah. a part of this community. We appreciate that. Well, thank you very much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Glimple, that is another edition of our Conversations with the City. We will see you again next month.